uh, after database creation, post database creation and configuration, you have to run some scripts, etc. Catalog, cat prog, pub build. These scripts, if you run them, then your database will become fully functional. Of course, you don't have to do all these steps if you are going with database configuration assistant. It will do everything for you, but we will go manually. Next, table space management. First of all, we will understand what is a table space. Then, basic SQL operations on table space, like how to create, drop, alter table spaces. Then, understanding blocks, extents, segments, all these things. What is a block? What is extent? What is segment? Okay. Then, we will see extent management. It is an interesting topic. Like, you have two types of table space, dictionary managed and locally managed. So what is dictionary managed table space? So what is locally managed table space? And then big file table space. Also we will be covering something like temporary table spaces, temporary table space groups. Okay. So those are also topics that come under table space management. This is very important topic because uh, this is most frequently used in uh, general DBA day to day activity, table space management is one of the common topics because that is the storage part where our data is storing. So table space is a important. User management, managing user schemas, how to create the users, how to drop the users, how to change their passwords, how to give quota. Quota management is again very important. Then you have something called as roles and profiles. Roles are basically collection of privileges. Like for example, we can create a role and we can grant several privileges to the role and grant the role to a user. So that is the concept of role. Profiles are there basically to control the users. Okay. Like for example, if you have a user and you want that user to, uh, for example, we don't want the user to leave the system idle for more than 5 minutes. If he left the system idle for more than 5 minutes, he should get disconnected from the Oracle database. So, uh, then you can go for profiles. Then you have OS authenticated users. But a user is basically uh, having the same username as operating system username. So, he doesn't uh, require to give password to log into Oracle. But that is not recommended, yet we will see that, no problem. Uh, networking, uh, this is again important because whenever you want to communicate with Oracle database, uh, you need some form of networking between client and server. So there is a process called listener that comes into picture and how to configure this listener because the listener is the process which will authenticate incoming connections. Whenever user is trying to connect to Oracle, the request of connection will go to listener. Listener will take the username, password and check in the Oracle data dictionary whether the user is existing or not existing, whether the password is correct or incorrect. And if everything is okay, the session will be created with the client. So we will see how to configure listener, how to start listener, stop listener, check the status of listener. You will see TNS names configuration, that is client side configuration. Remote authentication using Aura password file. This is again very important, remote authentication means you want to work remotely as a DBA. The database server is in location A and you are in location B. You want to connect to your database server as a database administrator then you can go with the remote authentication. For that you have to use utility called Aura PWD. So all this we will see. And also we are going to see how to implement database links. Database link is creating a link between two Oracle databases. Through that database link we can perform SQL inserts, updates, deletes on tables in uh, other databases. So we will see how to create this database links also, very important topic. Here also you can see how to create the materialized views, creating the materialized views because mostly when db link comes into picture, the next moment we will go for the materialized views. 
that we will see what is the use of that materialized view and all I will tell you at that time. We have server parameter file and oracle managed files. So server parameter file is very important. Every day database will have concept of server parameter file which we also call it SP file. Uh, oracle managed file is a subtopic associated to that. Then as I was mentioning earlier we have file called control file how to manage control file that is the topic and we have another file called log file and how to manage log file that is another topic. Data file management is nothing but table space management. Data file management you will learn in table space management. Then you have archive log management. Archive log management is necessary for backup recovery. So if you are planning for a, a recovery you must go for archive log. If you don't have archive log enabled, you cannot do recovery. So what is archive log? You will learn in architecture itself. How to enable that archive log process, you will see in this archive log management. NID. Using this NID utility, DB new ID is the utility name. You can rename the database. You can change the database name or you can change the DB ID. Every database will internally have a database ID. The database ID can be changed whenever you want. Of course, that should be done only on a uh, when the company is telling you to do that. But in test environment, you can do it any any number of times. So changing the name of the database or changing the ID of the database has to be done with NID. Then undo management, flashback query. So this is all uh, resumable transactions, default rollback segment. All these topics are related with uh, undo. Undo is for example, you deleted some data. I will tell you briefly what is flashback query to give some clarity to you. You deleted some data and you get commit. After committing, you want to get the data back. But rollback will not work because you have given commit. If you delete and commit, how can you roll back? you will not get data back. That is where flashback query comes into picture. Flashback query basically allows you to get back the data even after committing. Whether it was update or delete that is irrelevant but you can get back the data even after committing. That is flashback query. Backup recovery begins after this. One of the very important topics Here, first of all, we will go with logical backups, that is data pump. We are going to see 11G data pump. Data pump is a utility that is used to perform backup of logical database. Like for example, I am telling you to take backup of spot user in Oracle database. How are you going to take backup of spot user in Oracle database? For that, you need this data pump technology. You can backup a single user or you can back up a single table or set of tables or you can back up entire oracle database also by using this data pump technology export data pump import data pump expdp impdp that is the name of the utility executable is called expdp for taking backup impdp is used to restore the backup let us say I export it spot user today and then what happened? Spot user got dropped somehow. So again I can import that backup with the help of IMPDP. EXPDP is used to take the backup and IMPDP is used to restore the backup. So we will see how to work with this. So there is a lot of architecture here also. So it's just a single line. And in the syllabus but actually the topic, there is some theory also over there. The theory will be attached to almost all the topics. So there will be some theory with every topic. Without theory there is no topic. Every, every time in Oracle DB you take any topic like table space management, user management, whatever it may be. There will be little bit of theory and then some practical. Now, physical backups. Physical backups or user managed backups, what we also call that. Term. You have cold or offline backups and hot or online backups. Cold backup is nothing but you are shutting down your Oracle database 
and taking backup of all the files. You are copying all the files to some device like a tape drive or to external hard disk. That is a cold backup. Once you backup all the files again you start your Oracle database. Hard backup is done without shutting Oracle database. You will uh, not shut the database as it may be a production database. You cannot shut it. But yet you will copy the files. That is called hard backup. How to do this cold backup and hard backup? Next. How do you perform recovery with the help of cold and hard backups? Okay. So physical backups and I should add over here recovery using physical backups. I will just add that. Recovery scenarios. So whether your backup is cold or hot backup, the recovery process will be will be the same. The process to perform cold backup and hot backup is different, but the process for recovery is the same. So we we will see different types of recovery scenarios over here. We will see like for example, if control file of the database got deleted, how to recover the database? If some data files got deleted, how to recover the database? If some uh, uh, log files, redo log file got deleted, how to recover the data? We will see various recovery scenarios. That is very important. Okay, how to recover? That is nothing but user managed backup and recover because everything is done by DBA. We are not using any third party tool over here. In cold and hard backup, total backup and recovery will be done by DBA manually. Then you come to Armen recovery manager. The recovery manager is a tool. With the help of this tool, you can perform backup and recovery. And it is nowadays the only way of doing backup recovery. Because if you have one terabyte or two terabyte database, performing uh, physical uh, user managed uh, cold and hot backup is very difficult. So every company they will implement Armen, and you should really be very strong in Armen. The Armen is having its own architecture. First of all, then you have to configure Armen. Then you have to see the Armen backup options. Then you have to see how to perform scripting in Armen, recovery with Armen. Then they have introduced something called Data Recovery Advisor from 11G. If there is any disaster, it will give advice what to do because maybe DBA is uh, not uh, uh, ready. Uh, for uh, that particular disaster. So Armen itself will help the DBA to do recovery, data recovery advisor. Then Armen without catalog. So what is catalog? You don't know just now. Later we will see that. Incremental backups with Armen. Okay. So once you are done with backup recovery, no, this is very important, Armen. Once you are studying all this in Armen, you will be seeing many, many scenarios in Armen. Armen is again very big topic. Almost four or five classes will go for our method. Then you come to cloning. Cloning again we are going to see with Armen. That is the what is very hot in the market now. Uh, performing the cloning with Armen, active duplication. Also I will show you additional clone with hard backup. So it's also very easy actually, nothing much in that. Patching we will see how to apply patch. Patch is nothing but Oracle updates. So you, you have purchased Oracle software and you installed and you are running database, but from time to time Oracle will release patches. You need to apply the patches or updates and uh, you have to keep your database software up to date. 